Hello, and welcome back to what we were calling Quarantine Conversations, where we interview somebody fascinating, somebody that I really want to talk to uh, while we were in quarantine. But since we're not exactly quarantined now, things are a little different, and it's the Christmas season, I figured there was no better way to celebrate it than talking to the director of one of my favorite Christmas movies, and a movie that's celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, ironically enough, so perfect timing. We are here with Mr. Brian Levant. How are you doing, Brian? Wonderful, wonderful. Good to be here. Good to awesome. be anywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So uh, first things first, do you have all your uh, Christmas shopping done, I guess, is the... Uh... Uh, 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 I, got, uh, I got a Turbo Man doll for one kid, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all you need. <laughs> um, so pretty crazy that this is the uh, 25th anniversary of Jingle All the Way. That's... Uh, a movie that kind of has a life of its own, I would, I would say, because it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very interesting and unusual story that um, I look at the other films that were released at the same time as us, Ransom, Space Jam 1, uh, mm -hmm. 101 Dalmatians, the, the films that walloped us at, at the box office at the time, and I don't believe there's any 25th anniversary screening of any of them, whereas I'm I'm hosting one in Tucson uh, uh, this weekend. Nice. There's another there's another uh, showing in Santa Monica uh, uh, that night next Sunday night. Uh, Quentin Tarantino just did a big family matinee at one of his theaters in, in LA. Wow. They're doing screenings in Atlanta and Detroit and God knows where else. Uh, it's it's terrific. It Films that were not financial or critical successes aren't usually celebrated uh, uh, on their 25th anniversary or at all. <laughs> and I think this film has had a very interesting life in that it has become a, a sort of a cult classic. I wouldn't put it in the same league as, as say, It's a Wonderful Life which was another holiday film, 1946, that uh, did not do well at all at the box office. Terrible. And at one time, was even, it even fell into the public domain. <laughs> uh, but today is revered and played annually uh, 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 on NBC and stuff. So, so you know, it, it can happen. It is unusual. And so I'm always saying to myself, why? <laughs> And I, and I don't know that I have a good answer. Someone said to me something very interesting uh, about it, that, that for people who grew up in the late 80s, 90s, early 2000s, that it is a snapshot of the world before 9-11, that, that, that there was a, a more innocent, simpler time in our lives where where the biggest problem was striving to be a better person <laughs> and, yeah. not, and not just keep your head above water or alive today. Right. Um, and, and I also think that, that you know, the, the, the ability for people to own movies, which really didn't come along until the early 90s, unless you were 100, Beethoven, for instance, my film Beethoven, uh, was the first movie that did not gross a hundred million dollars that was a sell-through meaning you could buy the vhs and so 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 jingle jingle was brought into people's homes and i think it's people started on the holidays going through their old vhs's and started pulling it out and it grew from there and it, and I first noticed it, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago when I, uh, you know, I, I, I teach at two universities now part time and, uh, and and I do a lot of lecturing at schools as well. And all of a sudden people, the only thing they would ever ask me to autograph and believe me, people don't ask me to autograph much uh, <laughs> was their, their their treasured VHS copies of Jingle All the Way. And so what started wow. is, is a sprinkle is kind of turned into a thunderstorm of <laughs> affection. And, and now, now I get a lot of notes on, on Instagram from, from people who thank me and tell me how they watch it with their kids now. 
and, and it's 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 had an outsized emotional effect uh, on a lot of people and and so my response is oh well, yeah sure where were you in 96 uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it was it was uh, uh, you know everyone involved poured their heart and soul into it and it was a very difficult rushed tremendously rushed project you know I mentioned you know Space Jam and, and 101 Dalmatians these are movies that were planned and marketed there uh, everything was put together years in advance jingle all the way was really was really you know uh uh, uh you know the, the film was still a little wet when, when it went into the theaters there <laughs> there weren't even though we did have minor merchandising there was a tie-in <laughs> for some reason with union 76 uh uh the the, the gas company petroleum, not natural gas, uh, and, and they had a tur turbo man in a car. And I look at it and I said, why does he need a car if he can fly? Uh, <laughs> that didn't go over too well. And, that's like all the, and, uh, and the, it's like all the, the uh, Batman ones you see where it's, uh, here's Batman underwater. When did he do that in the dark night? Well, he, why is... <laughs> if, if, you look, if you look at the old Batman annuals, they always went out of their way to, to all the different Batmans, you know, the one yeah. in the different costumes, which somebody made a good toy of. Uh, and, and, you know, Batman uh, in space, Batman underwater. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, uh, getting back to this, um, where was I? <laughs> you distracted me. Young oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. So Tiger Toys. I'm looking right at your your yeah. Funko, uh, Funko uh, reproduction of it, which is almost exact reproduction. The box is slightly smaller. I noticed when I put uh -huh. it against the original. I I was going to uh, ask you about that because I, uh, I never could get my hands on the original. So this has been uh, it, it's, awesome yeah, to have. No, it's great. And and so in 1996, uh, they made 200,000 of them. <laughs> and wow. I think they probably sold 185. <laughs> probably half of them to me. Uh, but But it was not a successful toy. And... And our dreams of this being a monster success and making Turbo Man the hottest toy in America, like the movie, did not materialize until 25 years later when Funko uh, reproduced the Turbo Man and it literally was flying off the shelves. I had to buy mine on eBay. Yeah, that, and, and that now, goes to show they, even they, the uh, even yeah. the director can't get his hands on one. You know, it's a, uh, well, it's nice, a hot nice, toy. Nice of them to send me one, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nor did they send me the, the Funko Pop. I also noticed you have the, the, the uh, Howard uh, Langston with the candy cane. I don't have that one yet either. Yeah, uh, that's uh, it's pretty wild that uh, even back in the day, you couldn't get the Turbo Mans off the shelf. Now you can get regular old Howard and Myron. And uh, people, in costume, people want out them. Of costume, <laughs> it, 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 it's great. I'm so sorry they didn't make a booster or a Demen. Uh, uh, that's what I'm number. That's what I'm uh, waiting on. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you could do all the characters, but uh, it would be great to do a Jake Lloyd, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess they figured nobody wants booster. <laughs> <laughs> I think people do, given the, the sales there, it's already sold out. All yeah, of them are unavailable would, from Funko. Yeah, I would I would buy Booster immediately if they uh, if they offered him. Yeah, so you may not be the most normal American, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably true. But, but, but you, you know, so so so, you know, that, that's that's been great and fun. But the, the fact that for so many years now, I have been receiving uh, uh, fan art and and fan figures. Uh, there's a, a, a young man. Uh, uh, you can find him on Instagram uh, under rumor R U M O U R Skywalker in Japan. Young guy who works in his grandfather's sock factory, and wow. he is a Turbo Man fanatic. And <laughs> uh, and he twisted my uh, through through constant flattery. He twisted my arm into allowing someone to come in and 3D scan all of the original figures. Wow. Uh, which, so he, he has the computer uh, molds and, and he is 3D printing. Uh, and it's been very difficult to find craftsmen who work with him and it's been very delayed and stuff, but he is reproducing the entire line and uh, the, uh, they're beautifully made and stuff. And, and there was a market for it. So it doesn't surprise me that, 
that Funko being as smart as they are in the industry uh, would, would seize on this. And once again, it just shows that it's gone from being a dud <laughs> in 1996 <laughs> to becoming, you know, part of the cultural conversation uh, uh, 25 years later. Yeah, that's kind of the magic of Christmas movies, I think. It's just uh, if you can get a good Christmas movie under your belt, people are going to go back to it over and over well, and over. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, I, I, I did Jingle, and because it didn't take off, uh, I was very, very wary of doing holiday films, and I turned down Elf. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, well, that, you know, was that because I, I, of, uh... look, look, you know, different people, different people see different things in scripts, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't, and I thought at the time that number one, I was very hesitant to do a Christmas film uh, because you don't, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to fail with the same material twice, <laughs> right? Uh, and and it seemed like one of those Saturday Night Live sketches. It wasn't quite working that Will Ferrell was just pumping the same thing and, and, and hitting it with the with the energy button and the overdrive. And I just wasn't sure it was going to work. Now, John Favreau saw saw uh, uh, saw it and and, you know, heard Leon Redbone and saw the Rankin Bass animation at the top and saw the six foot two Will Ferrell sitting sitting in Bob Newhart's lap and all that. And yeah. and, uh, and I didn't. But, you know, other people passed on, many, many people passed on the Flintstones. Many, many people passed on Snow Dogs. I was not the original director even of Beethoven. You wow. know, <laughs> uh, you, know it, it, you just have to see it. And, yeah. And, 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 I, and I did in Jingle. And, and the, the, one of the most interesting things is, is, is I saw it on page one. On page one, it, they were, it was shots of manufacturing the Turbo Man figure, having it come down the production line, stamped, painted, uh, uh, boxed, shipped, and oh, this is great, this is great. And then, and then so I, I signed to do the movie and the first thing he says, well, you know, it takes six months to make a toy, so we're not gonna be able to shoot that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Hey, they did it for Child's Play too. They can't do it for uh, Turbo well, Man. <laughs> once again, once again, this uh, planning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. having and having a partner, having the and having the toy ready to go. We they t Tiger Toys had to wait till we had a design, which we should talk about designing Turbo Man. It was a, a very in interesting uh, uh, phase uh, uh, of putting the film together. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say when you when you first came on board, uh, how uh, what were you shown? Just a script and yes, I was no shown, idea what I anything believe, looked like. I believe Randy Cornfield's uh, original script. I don't know if anyone had done any work on it besides him, um, and and uh, and so so that was the opening scene. Oh my God, I'm gonna have a great toy. <laughs> I'm gonna have a whole line of them. It'll be great. And then you find out you can't do it. Which led us to to creating a, a different opening. At first, it was written uh, as is rescuing the president from a giant warehouse, and it was well, how are we going to do flying rigs and stuff in a warehouse? Uh, you know, <laughs> so 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 we moved it uh, the scene to Vasquez Rocks, where we would shot the Flintstones neighborhood uh, and the Flintstones, and which you've seen in many 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 sci-fi films and westerns o over the years uh because of its unique uh uh geological formation it's the 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 uh, teutonic plates that that are underneath the earth at some point rose out of the ground and they're very dramatic and there's all this molten rock it's, it's an amazing looking place and 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 uh and it was perfect uh for us to do that and play it as another world uh and, and 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 of course, the scene that we we did was uh, a typical episode of the Turbo Man series. And I was uh, fortunate to recruit uh, what it, what it is in effect 
uh, was my stock company uh, of people who I'd worked with over the years again and again, and who I could kind of say, hey, would you do this little part for me to kind of juice the opening of the movie? Harvey Corman, the Emmy winning uh, comic, uh, comedy actor, uh, uh, most notably from the 11 seasons on the Carol Burnett show and, and many Mel Brooks movies. Uh, uh, Richard Mall played Dementor. He was Bull on Night Court. And I'd first worked with him on Bad News Bears in 1981. And, and, and he was in Flintstones as one of, one of Fred's bowling partners uh, on the team there. And, uh, and he was also later in Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster for me. So, uh, and Lorraine Newman, uh, uh, an original cast member of Saturday Night Live, uh, who, who we've collaborated many times over there. She was in Flintstones too, a little bit. And Justin Chapman, who was the star of Problem Child 3, <laughs> uh, a film I was executive producer of. <laughs> awesome. It's a, a family affair. <laughs> like yeah, a lot of, uh... and, and Dan Reardon, who, uh, he with the sonorous voice, uh, he played Captain Zoom for me in uh, the first Star's original picture, uh, The Adventures of Captain Zoom in Outer Space, one of the, my favorite projects of all time, which, uh, 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 you know, was made, aired, and and uh, and I haven't seen much of since, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, same with Jingle All the Way. You never know uh, down the line anything. Oh, can this happen. this is that was also '96, I believe. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> so so there are no screenings of it or toys. Uh, as much <laughs> as I would have loved a, a Captain Zoom, do I, actually, I could have one made. Now I know people who make who make. Yeah, dolls. there you go. <laughs> No, it was great. Uh, Michelle Nichols from Star Trek was in it. Ron Perlman. Uh, wow. Pirides, Liz Vasi, who was later on General Hospital and, and CSI and uh, and uh, uh, is now a producer, I just read. Has a project wow. going on the air with Mayim Bialik, uh, her, her producer. No partner. kidding. Anyways, yes, enough <laughs> going down memory lane. Well, I guess that's what we're doing today anyways. Uh, <laughs> so what else do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's great. I, uh, I have something to add to the watch list if I can uh, track it down. Captain Zoom. <laughs> the adventures hey, of Captain Zoom in outer hey, space. That, that should be huge right now, too. Uh, Zoom, we're on Zoom all the time now. You so know, uh, I, I, I've never even made that association. I, <laughs> I should have, shouldn't I? But, uh, um, so it, when you. So, so, OK, so, so, so I came on to the film. Yeah. And, and and we started rewriting and and, and we brought on uh, Harry Elfont and Deb Kaplan, uh, uh, who who uh, Harry, Harry was actually the uh, roommate at uh, at, at, uh, at NYU of uh, one of the kids on one of my shows. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Strangely enough, along with Tom Lennon from Reno 911 and many other things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and and they, they're terrific, uh, very imaginative and solid. And uh, they would end up uh, doing most of the writing on the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas a few years later for me as well. Um, and, and and so between Chris Columbus and, and Harry and Deb and myself, uh, I, I think we, we, we did a, a very nice job uh, on, on putting the script together. And this was, the, the, the schedule is very compressed. You know, for instance, usually on a film like this, you would have 30 weeks for post-production, right? And mm -hmm. which means that, you know, the, all the sound and everything has to be locked a month at least before, before, you, <laughs> before you finish. So we had 12 weeks, which wow. basically meant that we had to do a lot of editing as we went along, which, which is, is tough because you're only editing pieces. You're not editing the entire film. You haven't seen it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, top to bottom to know what should, what, what should, <laughs> what should be expanded, what should be contracted. Um, and then we had a, uh, we began to cast and scout and design. Uh, and in designing Turbo Man became a very arduous thing, you know, I, I, I look when I was in third grade, I created a comic book, the blue streak is still a good name, uh, <laughs> bad comic, good, good name. Uh, but, but, and, 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 I, and I'm, you know, really a DC guy, much more than much, much more than a Marvel guy. Uh, 
because you know Marvel didn't exist when I started reading comics. Uh, gotcha, well, gotcha. it did in the '40s, but not like in the in the current form. Yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four, Hulk, all that stuff. There was Captain America, I guess. Uh, uh, any, anyways, so I said I have I have great vantage point to design a superhero costume in the and, and by that time you know batman had come out in 89 and so everybody was hip to, to you know to the fancy materials and the and the abs uh, uh, that you can put on and everything and 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 i was also very influenced when i was a kid there the republic serials uh uh commander cody uh, who had a bullet-shaped uh, helmet and a rocket pack uh, uh, on a leather jacket, and uh, and and would take off, and that was that was one of my favorites when I was seven or eight, and and you know so try to take a contemporary superhero suit and meld it with 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 command, Commander Cody, and and nothing we did seemed to work. It's like every time we'd come up with a color combination. So, Oh, nope, nope, that, that, that's, uh, that's Green Lantern. Nope, nope, that's, uh, nope, that, that, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, no matter what we did, and, and, and my storyboard artist, Daryl Henley, Tim Flattery, who, uh, an amazing designer, uh, if you ever look at timflattery.com, uh, he, he has done everything from the Turbo Man suit to Thanos' glove and Batman, Batmobiles wow. and the most incredible objects in every great movie <laughs> for yeah. the last 30 years uh uh tim had a hand in and and he 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 was the one who took the the turbo man suit from from drawings to reality and guided that but uh we had a tough time i even brought in uh the tech creator ben edland at one point uh. to, to to do uh, a drawing of what he thought Turbo Man would look like, which he had big wings. I said, That's going to be tough. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But, but you know, the other thing that was influential, finally, in in, in the design, was a, a book I had called uh, "Cars Detroit Never Built" about the uh, uh, you know the, when they go to car shows, they do fancy uh, future show future versions of it. That's where the Batmobile came from. It was a 1959. Ford Futura, yeah. <laughs> as, the, as they called it, the, the Batman 66 Batmobile anyways. Um, and and so to take, like, to merge the contemporary costume and Commander Cody also kind of with a 59 Cadillac with fins <laughs> <laughs> and lights uh, and, and things that you, you might not expect. And, and, it, and no matter what, it just never gelled quite right. And then finally, we hit on the, the current version. Yes, 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 we love it, we love it, we love it, and everything worked. And then we finally looked at it and said, oh my God, it looks a lot like Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, same color scheme, I guess. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get Rumor Skywalker, at Rumor Skywalker, in, in Japan to, to do some gold Turbo Mans with red trim. Yeah. And that would look really nice. Um, yeah. That's just it's just such a, a tough needle to thread creating a superhero for something like this because there's like you, yeah. you can't look too much like this like you said it can't look too much like that but it also has to be like something that you believe well, we that some, every kid would want right and, and we end up with the guy who flies okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know iron Man. so anyways but the other problem was how to disguise arnold from his family i just read an article or somebody uh pulled up an old interview of Rita Wilson's uh, 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 who said, I felt so stupid. I'm sitting there standing at him, uh, staring at him and he's talking like Arnold and I'm not supposed to recognize him. <laughs> well, well, you know, we did want to hide his face, but at the same time, we didn't want to hide his face like Iron Man, like Commander Cody, because they just slap in a, a, a stunt double. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, him. Uh, and, and so I, I looked to uh, the return of Superman after they killed Superman, they had several Supermans versions of them that they were trying out. And one had had a, a, a clear yellow uh, a shield in front of his eyes. And, and I said, well, you can see his face. It'll disguise it a little bit. And to read a uh, uh, note that we did change his voice. A Turbo Man's was, yeah. was altered as was Arnold's as Turbo Man. There's not much you can do with Arnold's voice. <laughs> yeah. 
that's uh it's pretty unmistakable yeah <laughs> Where it was uh was yeah, that, we, we, we did on... our best jamie though you know we doubled yeah. it we, we flutched it we changed we repitched it we did all kinds of things to just to disguise it <laughs> a little bit without you know losing his voice um, was a uh, was Turbo Man kind of uh, based on Arnold? Like, does the doll supposed to kind of look like him, or uh... Uh, you, you know, you know, it, 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 the new one does much more than yeah, it does, it does, <laughs> than, does have than, a resemblance. Than mine. <laughs> I take it down, but I glued it because we have earthquakes here. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and show you. Uh, but but yeah, it, it's a little more somber in his expression. Mm. But if you if you look on Instagram, I just posted a. Uh, uh, I, you know, my 24 inch parade doll that, uh, wow. that, that, that this is, this, this kind That's... of epitomizes how I felt about the film for a long time. For 20 years, it was in a box in the garage on a shelf. Wow. And that's the screen, did... the screen used one. Yes. The screen wow. used one. Wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't until uh, like five years ago, I said, you know, you know, I, I, I'm getting proud of this <laughs> when they start yeah. doing marathons <laughs> on Christmas Day uh, and, and, and popping up on Saturday nights uh, over the holidays and stuff uh, on ABC. Uh, you know, it's a, well, maybe this isn't such a failure after all. And, <laughs> and I got him out and got a beautiful plexiglass box built for him. Yeah, it looks um, great. I saw it on Instagram and that's a uh, that's a holy <laughs> grail right there. <laughs> Yes, yes, and and everyone, I want that one day. Well, you're not getting it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that one that one is uh, spoken for. <laughs> it, it ain't leaving. And and unlike you know, I, I see Henry Winkler. You know, I, I did over a hundred episodes of Happy Days and mm. early in my career, very early. I started working there when I was 22 or 23. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I noticed that for charity, he's auctioning off his jacket, Fonzie's motorcycle, his oh, Happy man. Days baseball uniform. How could he do that? Yeah, part <laughs> with the jacket and the boots, but 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 the the baseball uniform, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I interviewed Dee Wallace about uh, ET stuff, and she told me that she auctioned off. I think she said she auctioned off the uh, the cat suit that she wears uh, for oh, Halloween. Really? She took that home, huh? My I guess so. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, I don't know who has it now, but uh, somebody man, I, I'm I'm such a hoarder. Me and you were both uh, toy guys, like, I can't imagine parting with the uh, toy I bought at Walmart, much less uh, <laughs> something yeah, right. that was in a movie. <laughs> well, but yeah, uh, people do it for different, you, you find me yeah, uh, one day and say, What am I holding on to this for? Who yeah. wants it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, how did you guys land on uh, Arnold? Because I read some things, but you probably have. Uh, better clarity about uh, there were some uh, people he that was, they wanted before him. Okay, I it was always written, you know. Uh, Randy Cornfield said, you know, someone someone like Steve Martin. Um, Chris originally wanted to do it with uh, like someone like Danny Stern, who he'd done Home Alone with. Wow. And, and who <laughs> and, and to get back to Christmas, I did Chris. I, I finally did Chris another Christmas movie when 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 it was. Uh, uh, I said, oh, Jews shouldn't do Christmas movies. Uh, that was my excuse for a long time. And then someone <laughs> said, yes, but all the great Christmas songs were written by Jews. And I said, you're right. And I took a Christmas story too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. But anyways, getting back to, uh, to, to the casting. And so I don't know where the concept changed from being an average guy to going after Arnold. I think they were saying, well, if this is our big holiday release, we better have a big A-list star. And so they thought they could land Arnold and Danny DeVito to do a, another film together. After, oh, after yeah. And, uh, and twins. So Danny, um, Danny no, DeVito playing the... And, yeah, and, so and Danny Arnold DeVito playing the Myron role, right? Exactly. And, and Danny passed. Wow. <laughs> so now there's Arnold. And I believe that Arnold was attached. I don't think they had the deal. Uh, yet it was subject to hiring a director that he approved of. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I had a very nice meeting with him eventually. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a guy who, uh, you know, we were just talking about Steve Martin. I, I've met with Steve Martin on films a couple of times and it didn't happen. Very different kind of process. Um, very different approach. I find that that I work best with actors who, like myself, 
were athletes, <laughs> you know, who, who come in and put their head down and they're going to, you know, grind and, 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 and sweat and, and, and make it happen rather than people are more cerebral and want to think about it and talk it over and, and, and try and get it straight in their head rather than just kind of go, go in and improvise and make it happen, no matter how, how, how strict you are on the script and stuff. There, you know, it's interpretations, it's everything else that around it that, that you have to fill and energize. Uh, and people like Cuba Gooding Jr., Jackie Chan, Ice Cube, you know, uh, the, these aren't guys, you know, who, who studied uh, in London, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but there's something there. There's the charisma, there's a, uh, and I, right, I but feel there's like. A, uh, there's, 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 a, there's an approach and a work ethic that, that, yeah. that, 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 that was more similar to my process. Uh, Chris Columbus was a very cerebral person. And, and although I think our comic instincts were very much aligned, uh, the process was completely different. And, and, and that, you know, and that, that, that made for some un discomfort on everyone's part. Uh, and and uh, let's see, so, so, so we had Arnold and, and I went to visit Arnold when he was shooting, I can't remember the name of the film, the one that came out right before uh, jingle and uh, had a very very pleasant meeting with them and uh, you know and talked about how I like to work and that's why he likes to work so so that, that was good and then now so we did not have Danny DeVito so you know that was kind of a tough part to cast um, you know we we seriously considered uh, and met with Jim Belushi who you know was, uh, I knew from Chicago, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know lived next door to my sister-in-law. That's how we first met. Oh, wow. My nephew uh, uh, hit a ball over his fence. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> and, one way to meet. Uh, and, that's and, wild. And, right, and who had done Red Heat with Arnold, and mm. uh, uh, and we read a lot of people, including Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman came in to read for Myron, and yeah, it was I read obvious that. that he wasn't Myron. And when he finished. Uh, uh, I said, you know, there's another part we got that, that you know, <laughs> you really might might really be able to sink your teeth into. And he kind of, well, reluctantly, you know, it's like Chris was in the room and he didn't want to say, no, I'm not going to do that, you know. And so yeah. uh, we handed him the other scene, didn't even look at it. So you want to take a minute, look it over? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and he launched into it and we were in hysterics and it was obvious that, that we were done casting. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that part. And, <laughs> that, that's and, and such he, a and perfect performance. Joy. So, so still, so, so it's like, well, what do you? Do? And also, you know, even though the film was in Minneapolis, uh, Prince lived in Minneapolis. So, I mean, we, we, you know, racially, you know, I didn't want it to be a Lily White film twenty-five years ago, and and the prospect of Sinbad, who who was having some uh, success across the board. Uh, and bringing his energy uh, and, and and his comedic talents uh, that were really emerging at, at that time, and also the fact that he was bigger than Arnold. <laughs> that that to me, Arnold fighting Danny DeVito, not a fair fight. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, Arnold, you know, because he, you know, we we're shooting inside. He always had to have you know the jacket on and the heavy wool shirt and everything. Uh, you know, he cut the sleeves off and you've never seen arms, like, his arms are, are, are like other people's legs, you know, and, and, and you know, and it's like the veins are like snakes underneath his skin, you know, just, there, there's nobody uh, uh, like him. And so not a fair fight against, you know, four foot ten Danny DeVito, <laughs> yeah, a good comic pairing, but a bad, a bad uh, uh, match, really. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the mentor but, brain can only add so much height. <laughs> Uh, so, so Sinbad, so Sinbad brought a physical element that you see in scenes, you know, in the diner where, where, where they're, they're smashing each other and pushing each other around and they come <laughs> running out, squeeze through the door and Sinbad, you know, knocks them in, in, into the newspaper rack and stuff. Yeah. You, you know, he became a much more worthy opponent. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and 
I don't think Arnold had ever worked with anybody who who improvised <laughs> before, and 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 he he picked up what he should be doing right away, uh, and, and how to react to it and stuff, and and, and right on, on the first day, the only the only positive I ever heard from the studio through <laughs> the whole experience was a call from from the president of production who now runs Sony. Uh, uh, saying, oh, the first day's dailies, I loved you. You could see what the movie was. And the first day's dailies were Sinbad meeting Arnold on the street. And hey, come on, how about you and me, we team up, huh? Team, what? you know, like Batman and Robin, like, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and it was fun and you saw the promise of, of, of the film. Uh, actually, that wasn't the first scene we shot. The very first scene we shot was, uh, what I've learned on the first day of the film is get your first shot fast. So everybody knows you're there for business. Right? <laughs> you're not going to sit around. You're not going to be, wow, well, what are we going to shoot? How, where are we going to put the camera? How are we going to light it? You know, yeah. uh, uh, no, we're going to wait for the sun to be right here. No, no. I, we started with Arnold's, Arnold on the payphone talking to, 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 to Ted uh, and, and where he does put those cookies down. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. You know? uh, it, but, but the whole point of it was, it's a man standing still on a telephone. <laughs> yeah. So, hard, you know, not hard to light, not hard to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's where we started. And strangely enough, the very last shot in the movie was, uh, was Phil Hartman's other side of that conversation. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, 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 you know, and the fact that it cuts together so beautifully and it's become, yeah. a, a bit, you know, when Arnold got vaccinated, uh, you, you know, uh, you know, he didn't do I'll be back. He, 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 he put that needle down. You know. <laughs> wow. I didn't even see that. That's yeah. That's kind of become the biggest. I feel like the besides it's turbo time. I feel like put that cookie down is the one yeah, I see right. uh, it, it most often. Of, <laughs> it's part of his repertoire now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty big right there to be alongside i'll be back and get to the chopper one second abandoning you see if you can see that that's a oh, british yeah. breeding card company wow <laughs> that's great <laughs> so uh did the did the movie change at all once you guys got arnold because it's uh pretty crazy to go from well, like a uh, steve no. martin type to arnold no no we didn't and uh, I, I think, well, that's not true. I think we tried to simplify lines and look for more physical, which I'm always looking for more physical uh, comedy. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but, but generally, no. You know, I, I think, you know, yes, I think you can say, well, you know, was he miscast because he ended up in a superhero suit when he didn't need one? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so, but and and I think that might have been a, a, an issue at the beginning uh, uh, of of the film's life, but but no longer. Everybody just accepts him. Yeah, uh, I think it, I think that's kind of what adds to it because if you had like a uh, somebody else, I think what adds to how funny it is is like he's playing a normal guy, but this is not a normal guy. This is <laughs> like the right. biggest guy you've ever seen, and he's uh, just seems out of place, but he's but he's not. And it's so, yeah, it, it yeah. works so well. And he's, he's hilarious. Yeah. So the, the rest of the cast, uh, uh, Robert Conrad, my hero from wild, wild west. Yeah. Uh, uh, 1960 to 66. He was also on Hawaiian eye, which I used to watch. And I think one other that I used to watch when I was a kid and, and it was great to have him. And there isn't a funny bone in this man's body. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but, but, uh, you know that 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 really worked for us. It, yeah, it really did. and uh, and Rita Wilson, uh, who I uh, had on Happy Days twice in different roles, and it was I thought she was great. Wow, before she'd ever even met Tom, and and, and uh, we, we went we met with a, a lot of people, and they they just didn't seem like they would be able to stand in front of Arnold and fold their arms and, and, and put him <laughs> in his place. Uh, yeah. we, did meet, we did meet with Julia Louise uh, uh, Dreyfus. Uh, oh yeah, and and that that might have worked, I think. But but uh, you know, I, I really liked Rita, and the fact that the fact that you know 
she lived with an A-list star, and, and I'm sure from time to time, Tom, <laughs> pick up the towels in the bathroom. You know, <laughs> yeah. well, that, that she great. wasn't uh, she wasn't intimidated at all by, by Arnold or, or his stature. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, you got Jake Lloyd too, who Jake uh, Lloyd, uh, yes, probably uh, hadn't done too much at the time. He was in an episode of ER and maybe one other little thing. And he was a, a really nice kid and a very nice family. And I'm sorry for the problems he, he, he's had over the years. I haven't been in touch with him since Star Wars. And he, he sent me a, an autographed, uh, uh, you know, uh, figure of him. Wow. You still have it? <laughs> of course. What you... <laughs> awesome. Uh, I, I knew you did. <laughs> that's, and, that's incredible. And, you know, and actually, I'll tell you, uh, so, so, you know, I, I've worked, most of my career has been working with kids and young people. And I find it very helpful to have uh, a dialogue coach, especially with someone seven, eight years old. Uh, so they don't have to go home and drill and someone who can help them to, to, to be more responsive and, and be more in the moment and stuff. And I brought over uh, Walter Von Huhn, who, who was, uh, uh, who was, uh, uh, background artist uh, and later the dialogue coach on Happy Days and had been uh, with us for three years on the new Leave it to Beaver, uh, working with uh, the kids and and then seg segueing into directing. And, uh, and so I brought him on uh, to work with Jake and help Jake and, uh, as, as, and, and, and you know, Arnold sees him and uh and so who's that and I said, that's walter von Huhn. von Huhn. he goes up to walter and starts speaking german walter starts speaking german back to him and and and, and all of a sudden walter was working with arnold <laughs> not jake anymore and wow. stayed with arnold throughout his throughout his, uh, his, the, the next phase of his career and into the the governor's mansion you know, when, no when, way. Yes, and when, they met when on, Arnold and they met the, on Jingle on the way. All yes, the way. when Arnold <laughs> when Arnold gave the keynote address at the Republican convention, what I don't know what year that was, 2000, 2004 or something. You know, it was Walter who worked with him to get that performance. <laughs> wow. And it started on Jingle all the way. That's yeah, that's yeah. some trivia. That's crazy. <laughs> but you know, and, and and you know, Jake took a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, flack for his performance in the Star Wars movie. What is that? Episode one, they call yeah, it. Yeah, Phantom Menace. And, yeah. and, and when I spoke to his folks about it, I said, you know, he's he, not very energetic. He said, well, no one ever talked to him. I said, what? Lucas didn't direct. He said, George Lucas never said a word to him. And, wow. and I remembered a story that Ron Howard told about American Graffiti once, many years before that um, he and Richard Dreyfus and Charlie Martin and Cindy Williams and stuff, they would hide in, in the back of Mel's diner and run lines with each other and give each other notes because Lucas didn't communicate <laughs> what he wow. wanted from the actors. And there's a lot of people who are like that. They'll just say, let's do it again, try it different or something, you know? Um, and, 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 and I think you really gotta give people smaller parameters of what you'd like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> not everybody or, or work with them to try and and you know imbue it with some energy and feeling and and, and find things in it that you, you know maybe you didn't realize at first reading and bring that yeah to you. yeah i think that shows a lot of people talk about the performances and some of those prequels being kind of wooden and uh that makes a lot of sense now <laughs> Well, you know, uh, that that's who he is, but you, you can't deny the genius, the success, not yeah. just not just uh, Star Wars, but, uh, you know, many other things he was involved. Yeah, in, for over, sure. Over the years and the fact that he was he was the smartest guy in the world because he's he said, OK, fine, uh, you, you, I'll cut my salary, but I'll keep the toy rights. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what you really need, really. <laughs> that's yes. what it's all about. Yes, um, <laughs> they wish they, they hadn't made that deal at Fox, which doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And Disney owns <laughs> Fox, for God's sakes. That's what's happened in 25 years. A hundred year old movie studio is gone. Yeah. How, how weird is it that Jingle All the Way is now uh, a Disney movie? I think it will help. <laughs> I yeah. think it will help. I think it will spur merchandising. 
I think I think watch. I'll figure out a way to make more more sequels or a series or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll do that, Turbo Man. They, they know need, how to uh, exploit they need Disney Plus stuff. That's for sure. <laughs> no, uh, you know they know how to exploit an asset, and I'm hoping. And the fact that they, as soon as this is the first Christmas since they've owned it, and it is playing exclusively on Disney Plus right now, the film. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think they'll see that there is a big audience for it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was thinking that as well. And it'd be, uh, that'd be great. I never even thought about it. you could do a Turbo Man TV series for real. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about some of the uh, awesome uh, big moments in the movie, like uh, everything at the Mall of America, like how <laughs> crazy was it trying to film there? <laughs> well, it, it, it was no different from shooting anywhere else, except for the fact that, you know, it was two miles long. I, I, if you've never been there, it's the weirdest place in the world because it's like uh, uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of stores on one side. Then you go to the other side and there's the same hundreds and hundreds of stores <laughs> mirrored, most of them uh, wow. on the other side. Uh, because I figured, well, no one's doing the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we turned an empty store into a toy store, filled it up. Uh, and, and, you know, Basically, we, we shot there for a few days and we took advantage of the, the, the kids play area, the jungle gym where, where the ball chase uh, evolves into. And, uh, you know, so, some of it worked beautifully, seeing Arnold on the escalator, seeing the amusement park in the background. Yeah. You know, uh, but, you know, it's hard to do that stuff because you really can't light those kind of areas. Uh, and so it really doesn't match when you get into a mm. environment. Um, and where else? Uh, so uh, the ball chase, for instance, for instance, when the ball, the ball that Arnold's chasing, and, and by the way, the balls were supposed to be numbered, get there on the day. I said, the balls aren't numbered. They said, well, we don't have time to do that now. <laughs> I never, uh, oh, so, I never yeah. thought about that. Yeah, I, I, I believe me. I think about it every time I see it. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so, and so, uh, so, so, um, for instance, the, 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 the shot where the ball bounces down the escalator, you know, uh, you know, we were, we're looking at it and we started with the escalator packed, right? And, and, and what we discovered was you couldn't see the ball. So we basically <laughs> had to like get rid of almost everybody. And finally we call in Arnold to, to shoot it. And he looks at it, he goes, I thought there'd be more people. I said, so did I. <laughs> you, know? <Yeah. laughs> you just don't, you know, it doesn't always work the way you plan it. And for instance, when the ball is bouncing wildly through, through, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Duplo store where kids mm -hmm. are playing and stuff, that's all CGI. The ball is CGI there. Uh, uh, so a lot of it's real <laughs> super balls, as I call them. I don't yeah. know if they're still called that. Um, and uh, but but uh, for the more complicated sh uh, shots where it goes duh, 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 and bounces <laughs> over something specific and stuff that was CGI. That uh, makes sense. So, I was going to ask that, but uh, if you were just doing an actual ball, you'd be there all day trying to get that to happen. Well, you know, no, I mean, you know, it, it's like we'd sit there and, and, and you know, give, give me ten of them, and, and I'll try and make like a pool <laughs> shot, you know, yeah, try and get it to bounce exactly the way you want. And after like twelve of them, you say. Screw it. We'll CGI it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, which reminds me, speaking of things that we that we CGI that we didn't intend to, uh, the flames on Turbo Man's rocket pack. Uh -huh. uh, originally, yeah. we said, well, why why can't we just have real flames? It would make everything so much easier, and they'll respond to the wind and all that. Mm -hmm. And then we realized it's strapping a basically a bomb to the uh, <laughs> to the back of the future governor of California. <laughs> It was a bad idea. Yeah, that's a <laughs> might have been a recipe for disaster. <laughs> that that's another set piece that I really love is the parade and uh, huh. not not even just for the action scenes. Just like what a parade you got Paddington and Ernie and Bert and <laughs> Cat in <Yeah>. the Hat. <laughs> yes, I, no, uh, so much planning went into the parade to try and and fulfill every promise that we could in that <laughs> and and it started with designing floats 
that was you know this this is this is really the fun of film the the drudgery and 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 and, and horribleness of filmmaking is so outweighed by the planning and the post production yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah you know it, it, it it, it, the process, I mean, as Spielberg said about 20 years ago, we're dinosaurs. We're still doing this the same way we did in 1915, basically, with slightly better equipment. But we haven't yeah. improved the process. And it's slow and it's arduous and it's tough and it's challenging. But when your mind is put to, let's design the coolest holiday floats you can. And, and for instance, you know, my I, I collect snow globes, so I wanted the giant snow globe with the snowman ice skating, uh, yeah. roller skating. Uh, well, we made it wanted it to look like ice skating, but it was roller skates. And then, oh, of wow. course, you know, with the snow in the snow globe, what happened was, well, the the, the roller skates wouldn't work on the snow, <laughs> so it's just kind of pushing around instead of skating. Uh, but even on the back of that float, that there was a, a, a cold winter a face of winter wind that expelled, yeah. and, you know, whoa, that blew, uh, that blew snow, smoke and, and snow out. Um, the the Turbo Man parade to try and and have this fight take place uh, on 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 the float and have some room to do things like shooting turbo discs <laughs> and, and give people a running start and, and land and, and do all these crazy things. And and just what, what goes into things like that, uh, the the police float that Sinbad crashes into with all the cops <laughs> with the trampoline built in, the guys doing flips is, you know, think about it, you're, you're moving and you're doing flips. So you're coming down not where you took off from, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, but you know, it's like, what can you do to elevate this beyond what they do on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? I was going to say, some of this is like crazier than what they do on there. Oh, that was the idea. I mean, you know, and, and you know, the Rose Bowl is just all flowers and shit. But yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, but but you know, try try to do more interesting and more fun things than they they did in those kind of parades and the the parade of the characters was part of, of that and it was great that mattel said okay sure you can we will let you use barbie uh, and so we rented a pink pink corvette to put our, our barbie look-alike in and, and and we had and so the estates of dr seuss uh, and sesame street and and uh Madeline and, and yeah, uh, uh, who makes Rock'em Sock'em robots? We had to, oh, clear. yeah, I forgot about them. But, yeah, there's all that stuff going on in there, and Kwanzaa is <laughs> represented, yeah, uh, and and the, and the giant presence on parade, the marching band. See, this is a you know, <laughs> you know, the, the, the I talked briefly about the differences between Chris Columbus and I uh, uh, about about approach and 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 you know here to me doing 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 a christmas movie was an excuse to put a marching band in red vinyl santa suits and to chris <laughs> it was the holiest day of the year so <laughs> you can see a little bit of a yin and yang <laughs> yeah <laughs> um with the uh with the characters did you guys reach out to you probably reached out to a bunch more people than who was in there right uh, just I, I, saw I, who would say yes I don't believe the only ones uh, that that were ones we couldn't get costumes for. Oh uh, yeah, you know that uh, you know. But and sure, why not be in, in a movie about toys? Uh, Christmas for families, a uh, big holiday yeah. release with Arnold. You know, <laughs> seriously. I mean, Doctor Seuss's estate is you know very difficult to deal with. I've heard. Yeah, and, I, I've there, heard that there's too. There's Cat in the Hat. <laughs> yeah and then this was a uh, that whole sequence was filmed at universal studios right yes yes and uh uh you know chris's guys had never made a movie on a lot they'd wow. always worked on location and i was brought up on lots so my instinct is always to, to shoot on a lot if it was me i would have gone to minneapolis for 10 days and shot the mall of america shot some driving shots mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and and and, and uh, said the uh, have a nice uh, summer, uh, and <laughs> done the whole thing in L.A. Well, even in Minneapolis, we ended up bringing in, we had to bring in a guy from Wisconsin to make snow. 
Wow. <laughs> Right. So, so we could have done that in studio city. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. You don't have to go all the way to uh, Minneapolis. No, it, Minnesota, Minnesota was very welcoming to the production and rolled out the red carpet and was, and, and was of great assistance and closing roads and, and, and leaving their Christmas decorations up for months instead of yeah. taking them down and putting them back up. We figured, ah, <laughs> i didn't even up. think about that so that's just stuff that was all some of that is just stuff that's already in the city and they just left it hey, up for you us. guys <laughs> yeah that's pretty wild wow well, think about it that was good producing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so when uh, but, but, but anyways you to get back so so uh you know they wanted to shoot the parade and they said, you can't close down a major street <laughs> yeah. you know and we had the street we liked and i showed him a picture of of the universal back lot, the New York street there, which is almost identical. Uh, and, and there was the, the same building. We just had to paint it brown instead of beige uh, <laughs> to make it look like the one in Minneapolis. Uh, yeah. and, and the best part of it is, unlike Minneapolis, if you look at streets that are shot on studio back lots, they always make a turn after a while so mm-hmm. that you're not, so there's no infinity to deal with. Uh, there's an there's a natural end to, to to the location, and so that was of great service to us as well, um, you know. And, and plus the fact, you know, we were able to, you know, uh, with no problem whatsoever, put cannons on on, on the rooftops to shoot uh, red and gold uh, confetti uh, uh, okay. during the parade. The first day we we shot the parade, we got a frantic called this was this was this yes uh, no it was the next to the last film i did on film itself and um <laughs> and the last something's terribly wrong with the film there's all this stuff all over they no 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 we did that <laughs> <laughs> wow. they, they were really they were really panicked <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah that's uh every year i watch that i'm like man why is this not a real parade? I would uh, I'd be there every well, year. Uh, I, there was a, some kind of Christmas parade in Minneapolis, and that uh, I think was the inspiration. Originally, it was from. Uh, it was supposed to be shot at night. Oh yeah, because I think I read and, on the and, and, and so on IMDb it says that Minneapolis one takes place at night. Yeah. So so right. So here's a so when we started dealing with special effects people, <laughs> uh, uh, visual effects people. They said, mm-hmm. well, how do you light somebody flying in the sky at night? Oh, didn't think of that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we just moved it to the day, which made it much simpler. And, and, and except for the fact that we're, we're filming Minneapolis in December in Los Angeles uh, 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 you know, at 90 degrees and you got 1500 people, you know, hats and gloves and jackets and boots. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> Got to pass out a lot of water. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it was hot. <laughs> Oof, that's rough. And uh, not to mention a Turbo Man suit that I can't imagine how uh, <laughs> how hot that is. Well, except for one thing, that's built into an electric cooling vest into it that keeps oh, you cool. Oh, gotcha. Overheat. That's part of a, sta- a standard issue for these kind <laughs> of uh, uh, you know whatever those suits are made out of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But ours was a combination of that, you know, the foam and and and, and just uh, um, uh, you know uh, stretchy nylon stuff. Um, so you know the arms and then the armaments were 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 attached to to those. Uh, so it was it was a little simpler and allowed for better movement than a lot of a lot of the, the superheroes suits you do see today. Yeah, you know, I always watch the Batman movies and the stuntmen. You know, it's really hard to do a fight scene when you can't move your arm. <laughs> yeah, you can't move your neck either. Right, yeah, right, right. So that's why you know we we did the sleeves out of a lighter, more elastic material. Yeah, well, um, I know you said it was a really like kind of rushed production. Was there anything else other than uh, putting numbers on the balls that uh, you really wanted to have in there that uh, just couldn't couldn't happen? No, no. The thing about a, an eighty million dollar movie is you really can get what you want. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, in in Tucson this weekend, I'm showing the evolution of the opening uh, of the movie, uh, which has never been, been seen really. And you know, and, and I'm kind of amazed that that you know, after the first time 
I saw it and we're still in production. I said, oh, we, we need to do, we need to introduce Turbo Man. And we did this whole like kind of, you know, 1950s Superman opening where where uh, 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 we interrupt you know, we we're doing the credits and we uh, we interrupted the, the we interrupt this the, this program to bring you an important announcement and there's Turbo Man and his secret identity as a newscaster going the president has been captured by Dementor uh, and where and where, Turbo Man where are you and they cut to the stage and and we're out. Uh, nice job, Ed, 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 and you know, the papers are flying, the, the speed, the seat is spinning, you cut down to the hall in the office, and he's undoing his tie and goes into the supply room like, like George Reeves used to do, and he flies out the window into outer space. So, so we were able to do that, and then when we finally looked at it, I said, no, we don't need that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it does exist, you could watch is that on a dvd or a of anywhere? course not no no wow. they, they, they'll never see the light of day you'll unless you're in tucson on sunday uh, after <laughs> the movie i'm gonna show i'm gonna show uh, uh 14 minutes of how how it evolved wow man oh man that's that's pretty wild i uh i just a few years ago discovered that there's a post credit scene in jingle all the way that i never knew about well if which... you watch uh, uh years later they we did what they wanted to call it the director's cut. I didn't want anyone else blaming me for more trouble. On <laughs> so I said, no, just call it something else. And they picked the family fun edition, which ties <laughs> that, uh, the, the ending to the, 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 the movie itself. And it's much more effective that way. Uh, and I, I recommend, I recommend uh, the family fun edition over the original. Uh, we, our previews were never overwhelming. I mean, I've had some amazing previews uh, in my life, and, and, and Jingle wasn't one of them. Uh, and so I think we might have overreacted and taken out some things that, that, that should have stayed. Uh, and th those are all restored in the family fun edition, uh, as, as well as tying that uh, the tag uh, that was post credits, you know, inspired by the hair. Uh, it, uh, now, now every Marvel movie does it, so you have to yeah. sit through the credits. Yeah. And then Ferris Bueller, I think, was the first one. If you remember, you know, mm -hmm. he was uh, finished the credits and he's in the shower washing his hair. He goes, "What are you doing here? The movie's over. Yeah. Go home." <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. so, and so, actually, in in that, for those who've never seen it, um, after after he saved his son from from Dementor, all is good. They're back at home. He's putting the star on top of the Christmas tree. And, uh, and and his his wife said, you know, you are so amazing. Uh, uh, you went through all that just to get, just to get Jamie a present. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what I want to know is, what did you get me? And, and the camera <laughs> zooms into his face. Uh oh. And had we done a sequel, uh, that would have been it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that uh. That would have been something. I don't know where you go from there as far well, as. Well, he's out and he tries to find a piece of jewelry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not as exciting as a turbo well, man. No, but I'm sure I, we hey, agree. But... Hey, let him rob a jewelry store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> get uh, get Myron involved again. There you go. Um, the cop. You what, got, yeah, you got everybody. Yeah. Martin Mull. <laughs> Uh, what what else is uh, different in the Family Fun Edition besides that? I'm curious uh, we, which one's on uh, uh, Disney uh, Plus. The. the montage of Arnold hunting for the uh, hunting for the turbo man, uh, which uh, Jingle All the Way plays in, we we restored the original version, which was much longer uh, and and had a slow song with it. Nat uh -huh. Tim Cole's uh, uh, Christmas chestnuts roasting and open fire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and, and so we did that. And so that meant that, uh, jingled all the way, had to find a new home and we expanded slightly the Santa Claus warehouse, uh, uh, mm. fight and chaos when the police come battering their way into it. <laughs> uh, and so the old music didn't fix. So that's where we use jingle all the way. And that also, there was a, a, a musical number that Jim Belushi and a bunch of, uh, Santas uh did where they sing wow. the little boy that santa claus forgot which is mentioned actually in, in, in a voiceover in, in in the car as they approach the santa warehouse but we actually get a performance of that song 
and uh, a couple other small things here and there, but no, nothing else major. So I don't think the Family Fun Edition is on Disney Plus. That might be something I need to no, uh, it's not, track actually. down. It's on wow. it's on the Blu-ray and the regular DVD. Is that that might be the one where uh, Arnold is dressed like Santa on the cover? Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's been there's been like five different covers, and and, <laughs> yeah. and they're all pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> I always think no, that the, one's the, funny. The, one, the poster I always wanted, and there's an artist in England who did a sort of a version of this uh, uh, last year, was Arnold in the Turbo Man suit, trapped, you know, trying to get out of the box. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's that's everything you need to know right yes, there. And, that's and, perfect. And if, and there's an artist by the name of Rocky Davies, who did a print for. Uh, for uh, Gallery 1988 in, in Los Angeles uh, for one of their uh, Crazy for Cult shows. Uh, wow. And he did the most incredible poster and I wrote him on Instagram and I said, had this been the poster for, for, for Jingle All the Way, we would have made a hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, so I, I love that If idea. you can look at Rocky Davies, uh, yeah. Rocky Davies uh, Turbo Man the movie. <laughs> I'm looking that up right after this. It, it, That's it, it, it's quite quite exciting, and and it and it it capsulized the excitement that was in the film that wasn't really portrayed in the poster. Uh, the late Tom Sherrick was uh, head of marketing there, and uh, you know had done ama amazing work. But I, I always thought this one was kind of lazy. Uh, you know, yeah, you got it. It's two guys fighting for the doll, but it didn't quite capture the film the way other posters uh, uh, of my films especially have. Um, yeah. You know, Do you think that's kind of what it boiled down to with it not being no, the success no, it should no. have been with like marketing? I, I, once again, once again, 101 Dalmatians, Space Jam, things that were planned for years were marketing. Yeah. <laughs> toys, manufacturing, all, you know, this, this was a big corporate, you know, uh, uh, assignment and every division of the studios uh, were involved in them in bringing it uh, to fruition and creating a campaign that, that created results. Now, mm -hmm. that, uh, it also, you know, also means that, uh, uh, you know, that, that we didn't have those advantages and they tried to play catch up ball. And, you know, and, and it's not like they didn't spend to market the movie. But when you have competition uh, that's performing much better than you on either side of you, it's hard to break through. Even though our second weekend, uh, we went up, <laughs> uh, uh -huh. which rarely happens. It's happened yeah. to me several times, but it doesn't <laughs> happen uh, much. And even that wasn't uh, uh, enough. You know, we went from 14 million to like 19 million, 18, eight, something like that. Uh, but you know, unless you were going to 28 and showing incredible word of mouth it, it showed it showed good word of mouth and, and good response but now we're never able to break through into big hit land <laughs> yeah well it's hard when you're up against uh looney tunes and michael jordan and that was one of like the biggest ad campaigns ever I feel well but like. that, let, let, you just gotta look around you know yes we had brian setzer uh in his orchestra and phil ramon the great producer who produced everybody from simon and garfunkel to frank sinatra you know wow uh at the board and they created a tremendous uh, uh, holiday album uh, for, for the film, but it wasn't, I can believe, I, I, I believe I can fly, you know? yeah. which was, which was a, a number one record. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know? Um, and you we know, know how that turned out though. So uh, maybe right. it's well, the but, 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 but the, the net result for Brian Setzer is, is next year will be his 18th, Christmas show, and he's done yeah. three more holiday themed albums as a result <laughs> of, uh, of Jingle. But but still, it didn't translate to sales on the soundtrack album. It didn't translate to, uh, you know, a huge uh, uh, side gig for him in his career, you know, to be doing these holiday tours where he plays, you know, he plays Rock This Town and stuff, but he also plays Rock Around the Christmas Tree, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just you, when you when you look at the, the biggest picture, you see how successful these other people were at marketing films that were were uh, as good 
yeah, yeah, it was good. I don't think any better than, than what we had. I don't think they delivered more heart, more humor uh, than we did. I think they're comparable in, in that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you know, we we were the we were the last ones out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, and always playing catch up. You know, Tiger Toys, not Kenner. You know, yeah, <laughs> but was, was making. Uh, I, I do not believe Tiger Toys still exists. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that they, name they, in a while. Yeah, mainly, they made handheld uh, video games, very primitive ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just funny how it all works out, though, because you said you're up against 101 Dalmatians. Well, now Disney wants Jingle all the way on their streaming service, front and center, when you uh, click on the Christmas section. I, I know, I know, and 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 that's been great and very rewarding, and it, and all this has changed my feelings about the film. I was uh, so disappointed. Uh, I had never really not succeeded uh, right. in, in, in the entertainment industry, which was, uh, you know, eventually, you know, they'll, they'll get you. And they did. And, 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 and I've taken <laughs> a few more hits since. Uh, but it, it was because of the scale, the budget, the uh, being under the, the creative microscope there, uh, we didn't deliver at the time, but now things have changed. And, and I was always proud of the film. I, uh, you know, it was always just like, well, why didn't it work? Is it me? Is it me? Was it the film? Was it the, the, you know, what the heck went wrong there? But it turns out uh, the patient was fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did, when did you start seeing that, uh, that kind of turnaround, like, hey, people are is, is catching that on to this. People started bringing me their their VHSs to sign, and they would say, you know, my family watches this every Christmas together. And you know, uh, you know, I think that that's that, that once again, that's home video, uh, and yeah. what streaming can do today that things become monster hits uh, when given the opportunity to watch them, uh, uh, you know, uh, at home. When I was growing up, The Wizard of Oz played once a year on TV. Yeah, and it was <laughs> and a huge was the only time event. We, right, yes, that was an event. Yes, we'd go yeah. to my cousin's house who had a color TV <laughs> and, and, and watch The Wizard of Oz that Dick Van Dyke or Carol Burnett would host, you know. Wow. Uh, and and when, when you had the ability to take any movie you wanted and put it in your VHS and, and people got it, and it was there and they started playing it uh, starting on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it became a tradition with people and it spread and people have now spread that to, to, the, to another generation. And, yeah. uh, and, 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 you know, I feel very good about Turbo Man and I don't even, I don't even think too much about Iron Man anymore. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I'll get a little closer there for everybody and, uh, Head over to your local Walmart, and you can get uh, get a Turbo Man. Thirty five dollars, which is uh, almost a hundred less than what I paid at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, and you don't have to fight a mailman for it, so that's a uh, that's a plus. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time with me. It's uh, it's great to talk about this movie. It's uh, one of my favorites, and uh, every year I watch it, and I think, oh, it's I know what happens, and it still gets me every time so it's terrific well you'll enjoy the family fun edition then yeah the way and, i have my and, uh, and, uh, marching and, orders now i gotta go <laughs> track right. that down well and and you'll call me back uh uh sometime in the summer and uh we can talk about yeah, my upcoming say, book my life was, and toys yeah uh, i was gonna say go ahead and uh pl plug something sure so, uh, no, well, everybody no. knows. <laughs> uh, uh it, the, it's a it's a massive book it's 480 pages uh, a beautifully photographed uh, layout uh, uh, of all my collections, uh, including including a wonderful Jingle All the Way chapter with a lot of oh, production boy. drawings and props and things, and uh, and and everything that I've ever worked on. Happy Days, <laughs> uh, Leave It to Beaver, uh, 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 the, the the Flintstones, uh, and and all the things that I collect uh, related to 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 animation, comedy uh and 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 old old tv uh so anyways we'll talk again it's been a pleasure uh yeah. happy holidays everyone 
and uh, it's it's still turbo time <laughs> yes <laughs> awesome well yeah we will definitely talk again next time we're gonna nerd out over some toys and uh talk some flintstones and everything but uh it's been a pleasure thank you so much my pleasure talk to you soon